I'm doing here already. Ready. Welcome to the Theodore Payne Foundation. Um, this is part of our continuing La Tuna Canyon Regeneration Series, um, which we are offering free to our neighbors and other people in Los Angeles, um, addressing fire uh, area issues, um, how to make your house safe, how to do landscaping that will keep your house safe, um, and other programs that have fostered the understanding of fire ecology and what it means in our region. Um, for those that are watching the live stream um, or watching us on YouTube, um, all of the programs in this series um, were live streamed, including this one, and they are being posted on Theodore Payne's YouTube channel, so you can watch them all and share them and let people know that this information is out there for them. Um, today, um, our speaker is Ellen Mackey. She is a senior ecologist with the Metropolitan Water District, has a long history in Southern California working with um, ecological, environmental issues, and native plants. Uh, she's also a veteran Theodore Payne person for many, many years. She is co-author of a really great book called Care and Maintenance of Southern California Native Plant Gardens, um, which is unfortunately out of print, but is in libraries, and we're hoping someday it will be reprinted. Um, and um, Ellen's going to talk today about something very personal. Um, she is actually a neighbor of us here at Theodore Payne. She lives less than two miles away from us. And um, she has, for more than a decade, been um, retrofitting, outfitting her own personal home to make it more fire safe because she is in a nearby canyon that is very fire prone. Um, and that's what this program is about, is the lessons um, that uh, Ellen has learned over time on uh, the big picture, not just her landscape and not just her roof, but all the details that go into making a home fire safe in a fire prone area. Um, and uh, we're going to get started and she's going to share a lot of great information with you. So Ellen, take it away. Thank you, Lily. You're welcome. So um, I'm going to explain that I have, we also live in a sustainable home. So while I've been retrofitting my house for fire resistance, that is one of the considerations in um, retrofitting my house to be a sustainable home, a green home. So I'm going to be talking about, oops, did I do that? Yeah, I did. I'm going to be talking about all of the layers and challenges and choices of living green in an extreme fire risk area. So the, the fire risk air, um, is just one of the challenges I have. The other one is always being aware that we're supposed to be sustainable and therefore people are going to come to the home since we have tours routinely and ask me a lot of questions. So, sorry. So this is, should look familiar to, what happened to that? Uh oh, is that okay? I'm sure it's fine. Okay. I'm sure this looks familiar to some of you. This is Chandler Canyon. It's the next, uh, the next canyon south. That was September 2nd, the Latuna Canyon fire. Probably looks familiar to some of you. I see you're shaking your heads. So um, before we get started, can I ask who you are? Your first name? Donna. Donna, and you live in? Uh, Central LA. Baldwin, Baldwin, Baldwin Vista. And you came because? Because my house is uh, fire from the area. So. Okay, so you want to see what you can do for your house then? Yeah. Let's start back here. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Tuchis. And What's your I, name again? Tuchis. Tuchis. And I, uh, our, our home is near Eagle Rock, oh. up in the hills there. Yeah. And I'm also in a fire prone area and I'm trying to convert our, our whole property to native. So. So challenges there too. Yes. Okay. And next. Uh, I'm Renita. I live in Sun Valley on Vine Valley Drive, and um, the Latuna Canyon fire came pretty close to my house last time. That was my first fire, so I feel like I know more since that fire, but I want to learn more than that. So. And I'm Lorraine. I live out in Simi Valley, and I've already had the experience of a. Uh, Brush fire coming right down through my neighborhood about 12 years ago, and I do have a lot of native plants. I'm always, you know, trying to learn more. 
and finding ways to make you know my home safer as well. Lily Singer, I work here at Theodore King Foundation. I also live in La Crescenta, so I was uh, watching evacuation lines from home and also here. Um, we were outside of the zones in this creek fire recently, um, and uh, I'm very threatened by it. And it's good that it's better. And of course, uh, working at Theodore King has been excited, exciting because we evacuated twice in the last two and a half months. Um, we had to be closed, but all is well now. Did you evacuate this week? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, at least there's a plan. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a plan in place, and yep. everybody knew what to do. And that's part of what people need to do. Yes. We knew exactly which archives to take first, second, third, and fourth, and we took the art. Just put them in the truck. Yeah. We discuss it on a regular basis, and we. We would put the truck in a, a whole row of Priuses, all the staff cars as well. So you have your emergency procedures. We do indeed. So that's what we're going to talk about. So um, one of the things we were talking about before we started filming is that we're now in a, a year-round fire season. This is our new reality. Yeah. You can call it adaptation to climate change. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. But um, right now, the new reality that people need to really get their arms around is in order to preserve the largest investment that most of us have, which is our home, we have to be more adapted to fire. We have to be adapted. Everybody's house is different, so you need to analyze your house, and you have to be heartless about it. So I'm going to show you some examples of this. I had to get rid of stuff. My patio cover was one of the things that had to go. I will show you why. It was going to go up in flames, and it's attached to my house, which is not a good thing. So analyze your house, and then different families have different needs too. So you need to think about what your family's going to do when you put together a plan, where are kids going to go? I've actually spoken to people who said, yeah, my house goes up so what? You're ready to lose your house? You're ready to lose all the memories? That doorway with all of your kids' heights on it, you're going to lose that? I don't think so. Um, so anyone who was here last Friday, but the September 1st, and watched as the frames got closer, it was scary. Did you know what to do? Did you know what to do? I packed my car, but um, I talked to my neighbor behind, and we actually had our hoses out, you know. But anything else you didn't know? Not really. Did you know how to get in touch, to get, get information? I did call the fire department Friday night, and then um, I was watching the maps online, just looking online on news and stuff. Okay. Yeah. What about, did you did you have to evacuate or did you pack? No. Yeah. Anybody else have to pack up? Oh yeah. You packed up, and did you know what to do? This time I was very organized. I made a list in advance. I organized everything so was central, and I made a plan. The one thing I didn't know what I was going to do was where I was going to drive to. I couldn't go west. That was Ventura. I couldn't go east. That was the creek fire. I was like, well, where am I going to go? Where am I going to drive around with maybe with two, maybe three cats in my car? However, I don't know if you guys in L.A. County have this or not. We'll get to that. Okay, because there was a cool we'll message thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, okay. Yeah. Um, if we don't, I'll let you go back to you. Yeah, okay. okay. So, um, if you don't have a plan, it can get scary. I found that I was up till 4 o'clock Friday night to Saturday morning. Going through a checklist, taking curtains off the window, pulling stuff to the center of the room, mm -hmm. putting a ladder outside, filling buckets. That's what you've got now, by the way, it's in front of you. That's what you have. There's a checklist on what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Did you know whether to lock your doors or not? Do you know whether to leave things open? So people aren't thinking of all these things. And there is a list of things that you can do. Part and part, they have to go through. Because of the part that they're I know, I know. I did see stuff online about looters, yeah. and so there's a recommendation to lock your house, but the CAL FIRE website very clearly says to unlock everything. Okay. Because they will go right through the windows. Right. Fire department. If they right, right. Okay. So we're going to go through all of this. So the first part is going to be how to harden your house beforehand. So that if you have to leave, there's some peace of mind. I have a higher probability of my house surviving. The second part is going to be, there's a fire, what am I supposed to do? OK, I know what to do now. I can start moving. And I'll be up till 4 in the morning, although I kept opening the door looking, and that rosiness was getting closer and closer. Oh, so where am I? 
Okay. That was the fire drop? It's probably right over near your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw one really close. Yeah. Okay, so you need to start the house changes now, and that's the evacuation checklist. This is the ideal fire fortress. This is from actually Australia, where they have big, big fires. So we're going to look at some of these things. He's got steel posts. That's one of the reasons why patio roof came down. Gutter guards, which should be cleaned. Narrow vents covered in steel ember guards, or just clean them a lot. I don't know about this. I, I think you might lose water pressure. Double glazed windows. Uh, metal rather than timber fascia here. And I have a story to tell about that. The eaves, thicker and deeper here, covered. We disagree with this completely, so we're just going to pass that. No timber in the house except the frame, bricks covered, and a concrete slab. And you'll notice this house doesn't have any vegetation. No foundation plantings. Foundation plantings, if they ignite, are going to go right up into your eaves, right? Mm -hmm. Foundation plantings, I think, was something that we got from the 1950s on. People didn't really do that beforehand. But I think it was um, job security for a landscape architect whose brother was in pest control. <laughs> The reason is, it's an invitation to every rodent, every insect, to come straight into your house because they have cover right up against your house, right up against your foundation. And you're watering it. I used to have ants and all kinds of things coming into my house. Not any longer. So consider, this is one of the things that may take multiple years. It takes, you have to, you have to let go of some of the landscaping. We'll talk about that more. So there's two things we want to talk about. Adequate defensible space based on wide selection, placement, and maintenance of near home vegetation, and the wide selection of building material and designs that help resist ignition. So, this is what you need to know. We're going to focus on this resist ignition from embers. I made everybody say this last time, so I'm going to say it again. Resist ignition from embers. The Santa Rosa fire, because the embers were running a mile in front, they started the house burning before the fire front even got there. Now there is contact with flames that can start your house on fire. There's also radiant heat energy that can start your house on fire if your neighbor's houses start. But we're gonna focus mostly on resisting ignition from embers, okay? And there's uh, Steve Corals down here. This is a wonderful information sheet. It's readily available. I can pass this around, but this is just chock full of information. That's right, that's that around. Lots of information online, because some of the online blogs I've seen say, why isn't there a plan? Well, the, the fire departments have been trying to train people for years. They haven't certainly dropped the ball. It's all there. So this is my house, because this is a personal story. So notice up here, there's a house here. And this is a ridge that you can actually see from the, one, uh, the 101 going south through the pass. Uh, so you can see this ridge. There's no homes up here now. And there's, there's quite a bit of scrub here. Notice the front yard is grass. This didn't last six months when I moved in. Took it right off. This is what it is. This is what it was in, oh, I didn't the date on here. 1993. This is like 2003. And I changed this again. I found out in LA people tend to refresh their landscape every five to ten years. So this concept of refreshing is normal. But look back here now. There's a house up here. And he has his deck overhanging that slope. Mm -hmm. And it's timber. Yeah. And this is going to be a chimney. I, I suspect if, if any fire comes here, it's going to go right up here. But he maintains this. And if anybody heard Lily's talk, in Melanie's talk, they talked about placement of vegetation. So this is the wildland interface right up here. This is all wildland. And we do have a, so I say bobcat up here? We have lots of coyote going through here too. So this is wildland. We see lots of dramas, you know, um, red-tailed hawks, hunting, etc. But they trimmed up all of this vegetation. They're doing a really good job. And while they're clearing, if I say, you know this thing? Yeah, uh, elderberry down here said, it's really dead. You need to take that out. And I'm like, no problem. I took it right out. So he's been really great. Can you still see? Mm -hmm. So there's the back slope. Here's my neighbor. Again, this is going to be a problem. I think his house is going to go right up. This is an old historic slide. And this is just before he did clearing one year. 
That's why it's looking a little ragged in comparison to the previous picture. But this was a continuous slide. He, tried, he did try to put some soil up here to make kind of a backyard and orchard. And the first rain ended up at the bottom of the slope. This is solid rock, because I crawled all over the slope before I bought my house, because I recognized this as a slide, and I knew that was not going to come down and hit my house. So this is pretty safe. And it took him actually two years to build this house. It took him two years to drill into the rock, put the footings in, and then the house went up probably in six months. So his house is pretty safe. But this fire area, you can tell, could be quite daunting, but he does a great job. OK. So the challenges we face as homeowners is fire. We have seismic issues we have to deal with in our life. Anybody remembers the North Ridge Quay? Aging infrastructure. My house was built in 1950. I just, this is mine. This is my sewer line. See this crap? I asked my plumber what's going on here, and he intercepted that just before it started massively leaking, right below my house. Yeah. And he said, I run into people all the time who won't listen to us. They're not, they're going to put up, they will do all of this renovation in the house and leave this under the house, and then their whole house smells, and they can't figure out why. And he said, you didn't listen to us. So listening to experts is a good thing, but also knowing what you're talking about is also good. So what I did, and I will, I will pass this on since it's women here, when you talk to a contractor, know what you're talking about and interview at least three of them. Make sure they will listen to you and not dismiss you because you're a woman and you couldn't possibly know what you're talking about. Make sure they'll hear you. Make sure they'll work with you. Yeah. And if you insist on stuff, which I've had to override a number of them, make sure they understand, yeah, we can still work together, but if you're going to be threatened by the fact that I know what I want, there's the door. I've had some issues with that. You felt you fit. You oh, yeah, you I had to yell at this like 300 pound man in my house and then kick him out of my house because he didn't fix, he didn't want to fix the work that he messed up. Oh. But he did, they, his company made him fix it. Made him fix it? Good. But, you know, but if, you get, if, you, if you interview three people, you'll get three independent estimates. And sometimes you're going to find out they're wildly different. Right. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't make those three interviews, you're not going to know. Right. Once you get three that are the same, or at least with the plumbers, I found, I interviewed three of them, they all told the same story. And by the third round, oh no. And that's when I had to look at this, and he said, you're about to go here. Yeah. I think it's important to also go to the California uh, contractor's yes. licensing board, and make, make sure, sure that, yes, that there's no violations, no complaints, that's a good idea. Yeah, and, and that they're legitimate. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Wildlife intrusions, I don't know how, but how many people are up against the wildland interface, but I am right up against it. So I had deer living in my backyard when I'm on vacation. One, two deer living right in my tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy used to eat all of my oranges. I never see them, but I know they come around. They come around at night. Yeah. Um, so sustainability. We're a sustainable home. This is uh, this is what I lust after. Actually, we already we have a lot of solar panels, but these are bifacial, and these solar panels will actually produce electricity from reflected light as well as direct light. So this, I would like to be my new patio. Bifacial. 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 Both sides. And they need to. Be, oh, sorry. They need to be low maintenance because as I get older, I am really feeling it. If I put six hours of maintenance in my yard. I feel it the next day. And then we have to be always conscious of finances. So all of these things that I've been talking about, I will do it over a series of years. I've been doing it for 21 years now, and I've done, so when I had to do the sewer line, that was the entire budget for the year. Yeah. Actually for two years, because I did it in sections. They came back one year and did one part, and then they did the rest of it. When I did the um, earthquake retrofit under the house, that was the budget for that year but it's better than losing the house. After putting all this stuff on the roof, I don't want the whole foundation to fall off. So just be aware, you don't have to do it all at once. And the things we're going to talk about, I'm going to start out with the easy things to do, and then move to the more expensive things. So we're going to talk about five issues. We're going to talk about eaves and vents. So I'm going to talk, I, did the, I did the patio cover removal at the same time, because it was fairly inexpensive. We're going to talk about landscaping, fencing. This is my old dug fur fence. Uh, roofing, Lily alluded to that earlier, and windows. 
that's the newest thing I have to deal with. Okay, vents and eaves. This is, this is a pretty easy thing. How many people have a home that was built around 1950? One? Anybody else? Everybody else is newer? Older. Older. Do you, do you, older. Okay, do you have vents like this? Foundation vents and attic vents? Yes. I have vents that are louvered down low. But do they have anything behind them? Probably not. Okay. I don't have foundation vents. I have a lot of attic vents, though. Okay. I have two attic vents. You need to look into those louvered ones. That's supposed to keep... The louver keeps the rain off, but embers are going to still get right in. Yeah. No problem. Actually, embers will go right in here. This is quarter inch hardware cloth. Um, covering it is the easiest thing to do. All right. Um, so you need to enclose the eaves with um, non-vented quarter inch hardback board. That's this. I'm going to pass this around. Watch out, it's kind of dirty because it's sitting outside. Hardy Becker board is a cement product, so it won't burn. And one of the, one of the bonuses for using this material is it also discourages all the wildlife entry. Because when I took my bathroom apart, which is actually right here, and I took the walls down, two skeletons of rats. Are you putting this all next to it? Yep. I'll but it doesn't you. defeat the purpose of, I mean, yes. having vents or what? Right? I'll show you how I put it up. Oh, okay. okay. So this, it, this has a bonus that will keep out at least rodents. I did have a skunk move under once, and I had to have someone go under and get that out. So, all right. So this is what you have. A luger? Similar, yeah. yeah I have one of those, too. I, and I, there was nothing behind mine, either. Okay, we're back to the eaves. Oops, there's the, there's the little guys who are no longer getting in the house. So here's the hardware plot. You can do more expensive vents. You can do baffled vents. I think they're called brand guard, which are baffled, and they kind of go like this. And so there's a tray that the amber will hit, and it falls into a tray. But they're about this wide, and I was going to get them for the attic and for the foundation, but I would have had to cut into floor joists. Um, mm -hmm. And in, in a seismically active area, where I want stability and strength in my foundation, I do not want to be cutting into it. When I gave this talk the first time and I had the brand guard vents in, fortunately the guy that I took a two-day fire class from was sitting in the back and was going, afterwards I said, what's wrong with what I said? He said, you're making it too hard, I'm way too expensive. He said, all you need is eight-inch hardware cloth. This is what you've got now, anybody who has this, quarter inch. An ember that makes it through this can still be lit and start a fire. An ember that makes it through this is dying. And so what they found through research is there might be a pile of ash, all of it out. So all you have to do is buy this hardware cloth and put it behind this. Every single vent, every whirly bird, anything on your roof that's an opening. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I have the whirly birds taken off, eighth inch hardware cloth put on, whirly bird back on again. Can you put, you can't put it like from in front of that quarter inch uh, on the outside? Well, but this, this is, it's kind of like when you're sifting sand, if you've done any geology, yeah. you, you have the largest pour and then smaller. So this is also acting to keep, keep out embers as well. So all this has to keep out is the ones that made it through here. So it's actually functioning. So if, let's say it's a half inch, this is going to keep it from coming in. So you actually have double protection. Yeah, the reason being, reason being is we just got our house green, like all new insulation, insulated the walls, insulated the roof. So there's like all this insulation up in the roof that's super high. They would have to get in through all of that to put the screen in back. Can they put it outside and find it more? It's up to you. For me, it was easier to just send them up into the attic because I didn't have that much, although I have quite a bit. I got like so many around our house. It's, it's like, up to you. And you don't have foundation vents? Uh, no, it's so weird. See, they just cut out the sections and then pushed it behind this stuff. It's not hard. Okay. And then just staple it. It's really easy. If that's what you need to do, then go ahead. I mean, it's better than not having anything, right? Yeah, because I have the quarter inch, but if we could put the eight inch over it, 
then we'll probably have to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It costs us a fortune. These are the kinds, remember I said challenges and choices? Yeah. These are the choices you have to make. And it's not going to be the first time you go, oh my God, I did this out of sequence. We're all catching up. We're all trying to retrofit our homes. And those kind of things happen. What do you hear about my sake? Uh -huh. Okay. So this is, this is the easiest part. By the way, doing this with enclosing my eaves was, well, let me put it this way. The brand guard vents were four times more expensive than doing this and enclosing my eaves. I think it was about $8,000. This was about $2,000 doing all of the, the wire and enclosing all of my eaves. So it's definitely worth it if you get the same protection. Okay. So I'm passing around the quarter inch hardy back and forth. This was my eaves beforehand. So this is all the exposure. And you know, Embers can lodge in here, right? That looks just like mine. Is that that's what yours look like? See, when I was across the street when on Saturday when we were watching the fire crust, I was sitting at, at my neighbor's house and I was looking at her and she had curling paint coming down. I went, oh my God, she's just going to go up. This is what it looks like now. Oh, because the most vulnerable part of your house. Think about it. When you're in a fire area, the thinnest part is that area that's hanging up. What's going to ignite first? The thinnest part, right? It's the most vulnerable. It's like when you start when you start a campfire, you don't start a big huge log. You start little pieces of wood first. This is the little pieces of wood that ignites the rest of your house. So remember when we looked at the fire fortress? He had thicker eaves. This is the thicker eave. Oh, Hardy back. Perfect. Hardy back. Where is it? That's so the same material. It's back here. Yeah, it's just a quarter inch. You can get it at any hardware store. And then it was primed and then painted. So he just nailed it to all of the, the... You can nail it that. You could just do that yourself? Well, I didn't. I hired somebody to do it. And I have cards from the guy who did it. So okay. it's a registered... It's a... His, the, our issue for our problems is we have a, his, a historical house. Oh. That I can't help you with. I like my house because I can do... It's very vanilla. It's a ranch house. I can do whatever I want to it. I do like that. It was one of the reasons I bought it. It's one of the Spanish with the wood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see if you can enclose it. We can enclose it and, you know, I don't know what to do. Coat those wood. Because it has like those decorative wood things that... Gingerbread? I guess it is, but it's, it's a Spanish thing and it's wood and it, it's along the eaves there. So I guess we could enclose that and do a treat that Spanish wood somehow. Are the eaves here? Some of these eaves are enclosed, aren't they? It would be on this building. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, kind of looks like wood grain underneath. Yeah, yeah, you can have it look like wood grain. Okay, and then so on the side, it's also that same material up around the edge. Yes. Okay. And That's then cool. there's, there's metal flashing. Yeah. Okay. Metal flashing. Okay. This is what we start to feel like after a while. Okay, this is the analysis part. I go through this every single time. So landscaping issues, fire. I'm right up against open space in an extreme fire risk area. Water conservation, very big for me. I have native plantings. You keep hearing that they ignite more. That's not necessarily true as long as you do the spacing and you pick the right plants. I have an organic garden. We grow a lot of our own food and we have an orchard. I want something low maintenance. Pest control is an issue since I have an organic garden and I want to spend all my time dealing with not only insect pests, but one year I had two rows of perfect broccoli and deer came through and ate the top of all of them. One day to the next, completely gone. So pest control, pest at that in that point. And then finances is always an issue. Okay. So I just wanted to give you an example um, of what you can do for spacing. Um, this house, if you, were, if you were out here on the street and you looked at it, so you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. If you turn it mentally and you're on the street view, because this actually continues all the way over this front edge, you can't see all of this granite, this, this crushed rock. You can't see it all. But you see hedges here, and then you see something here, and then something behind it. So there's multiple planes, and you're driving by, and you go, oh, that looks nice. And you don't even think about the fact 
They spaced all this out. There's a lot of water conservation going on here. I would get rid of this. Next to the house. Yeah, it's too close to the house here. But the, I don't know, um, I don't know that this is an extreme fire risk area. Oh, it doesn't look not this, so maybe it is. But I like the way they've done a really beautiful job and the irrigation, it is irrigated, is right through here and that's all. So it doesn't have to be sparse, it doesn't have to be just rock. This was done by a really good landscape architect, Cassie Oyagi. Mm -hmm. So keep this in mind because you might thought you'll see what my backyard looks like now. This is something you can do. Remember the fire fortress? He had pathways and concrete all around his house. What this gives firefighters if they have to defend your house, this is defensible space. They can get right up against your house. There isn't vegetation here that's going to go right into your eaves, which is hanging out about this far, so it's heating that area. It's out, and it should be out about like, three feet. Um, Jay Lopez, who is one of our local uh, LA County Fire Department Forester said at his house that he bought in Altadena, he put this kind of walkway all around the house. But that means whatever's there now, you have to let go of, give it away, pull it out, put something different there. But this provides firefighters who do want to go home with their, to their families at the end of the day, a place to get around your house and defend your house, which is what you want. So Jay would say, if you can look out the window, and see your plants because they're out there rather than being here, perfect. But I have to tell you, this took me two years, and I'll show you why. Here's another one, so you can be as creative as you want. You know, there's lots of options if you look online. So this is what my yard looked like. Imagine being a firefighter trying to make your way through this. This was highly productive. We got lots of food. Just out of this bit, there's, it's beautiful. It is. There's beans here. There's winter squash here. This is loofah. We're still using the loofah sponges from this year's loofah, which is right here and would go right up the back slope. It's the next invasive plant. Here's the kiwi, male, female kiwis. And I have all of this wood here. I had, I had grapes here, and then I decided to put kiwi in. This is my bedroom. Um, and I have planting beds all over here. This would be a million. Here's the gate that they have to try to get through. Okay? They're not, I don't know that they would try to defend this house. All of this stuff is so close to the eaves that you saw earlier. Those, the eaves that I showed you earlier are right up here. Right? So if any of this ignited, it would go right up into those eaves. That's what it looks like now. Actually, this is an apricot that's about this big. But it's only six feet tall, it goes out wide, and it's still two feet from the house. And this eave is enclosed now. So this is open, this is pulled back, this is several feet from the foundation of the house, there's nothing here. It took a couple of years to go completely around the house to remove all of those foundation plantings. But because I'm on a cul-de-sac, and I'm right at the end, and the slope is right behind me, Fire trucks can park on that cul-de-sac, and they should go right through my house. Now they can go running right through, no problem. So I am depending on them to protect my house. I'm making it easy as possible for them to do so. So this, uh, let's see, so this sits on all of them. It's a home ignition zone, and I've protected it. Water conservation, clearly this does have landscaping cloth. This is three quarter inch gravel pieces. I do use storm water from the roof to water the trees as well. Um, there's an organic garden. There's three planting beds over here, and the trees are around them. It's very low maintenance. All you have to do for this to maintain it, so it doesn't sediment in, you know how it fills in with leaves and whatnot. Toro has a, a like a blower vacuum. You just vacuum it. It vacuums it, mulches it, puts it into a bag, which I then take and put out. Very easy to take care of. And it was inexpensive. Plus, the, the, because any, any animals going through here, rats who I have, that I had a problem with, field mice do live in this area, um, skunks, possums, whatnot. This is so open, they don't like being in an open area. They like having cover. So we've seen a huge drop in any of those problems at all. And ants, I haven't had ants for years now. Because I'm not watering the foundation, the ants are further out in the garden, but not going into my house. So there were, um, Benefits I hadn't thought of. 
Okay, the next thing is fencing. Again, the analysis. I needed a class A fire rated material. I wanted something that termites would not eat. I wanted privacy still. And finances is always an issue. Termites. I don't know if anybody's seen that before. This actually happened with my kids playing in the backyard. The kids next door started tormenting them. Well, that's it. We're putting the fence. And here's the finances. So this is, I, when I was showing you the, what my yard looked like before, I turned around. This was the other side of the yard. Uh, this is the fence. This is those six foot sections of dope fur that you can buy in Home Depot. We put it up on a weekend so the kids could play outside. Again, it's very green. Unfortunately, it's also a wick. So this is the backyard. This fence comes all the way around here and right to my house. So what's going to happen? This goes up and takes the fire right to my house, okay. under the eaves. This is my daughter's secret garden. So when she got old enough, I transformed this because this is flammable, although not immediately. This, I mean, there's a lot. This would go right up. And I, I my think neighbor go, does that all along the chain link fence uh, next to the cypress trees. Oh my god. Yeah. You might have to work with your neighbors. I know. This, fortunately, uh, unfortunately, oh, fortunately, I put up so I could take right down and I put my new fencing right here. So, um, this is what it looked like at one point. There's the old fence. Here's the new fence. And this encloses her secret garden now. This is her secret garden now. And it's this stuff. It's called timber sill. And this is pretty hefty stuff. But if you look at it in the sun, it's got glass in it. So this is pressure treated and kind of soaked southern pine in silica that embeds in the entire structure of the wood. So it's a class A fire rated material. Mm -hmm. And the guys also made this day for me. And did they, is that, uh, they just put, I'm trying to see how it's constructed. So oh, okay, so thank you for bringing that up. That was perfect, and I didn't even have to pay you for that. Um, <laughs> if you look online for this stuff, you will find that when, when uh, Katrina happened and Brad Pitt was buying wood for houses in New Orleans, they bought a lot of this stuff, but because the conditions in New Orleans are different than here, it started to fail. So they sued them and blah, blah, blah. Here, in a moment of prescience, I designed the system. Again, the con I had to overrule what the contractor was saying. I went, no, I don't want it touching the ground. I want it suspended above the ground. And this is metal, so no ants are going to eat this. And there's a metal bracket right here, like this, that's holding the cross piece on, where is it? Here and here. So this cross piece is here. Okay, so there's, there's the two by fours going across, and then these pieces are screwed into that wood. Oh, so it's kind of, so, it's so the entire thing is suspended, and even the stuff in the ground is metal, so no termites are going to come up through that wood. This one at night? I'll show you. Let me see. Do I have a picture of it? Oh, I don't have a picture of it. I must have taken it out. Um, it's been tested with a blowtorch. So it might char, but it's not, it's not going to ignite. Wow. See how heavy it is? Yeah. It's the glass. That's glass in there? The whole thing. That's not amazing. just the, not well, just the mixed in. in. So wood, the two by four, yeah. was, I can, I'm just going to, off the top of my head, say how I envision it happening. Yeah. In a huge vat, under pressure and heat, forcing silica throughout all of the vessels, the wood vessels yeah. in this wood. Would that be good decking material too, for one deck? Possibly. I would look into it now. It is more pricey. It's, pr it's pricier. It's more expensive. I just got an alert on Nexel. And it says the 118 close at Yosemite due to, guess what? Uh -oh. But it says the fires contain, and according to the Ventura County Fire Department, Mm. Wow. Yes. Okay, so here, um, 
The materials is, is part of an innovate, no, the materials were expensive, more expensive, and it was only like 78 feet. This was a fence that I devised for between the, here's the old patio cover, the, the backyard and the driveway because I didn't want to have a solid fence where I couldn't see if somebody was hiding there. So they're spaced apart so I can see through them, but you can't see it from the street because it's at an angle. So they made this for me, and again, I think you can see a little bit better how it's constructed, see these cross pieces? That's what they're screwed on to, okay? Um, so the material's more expensive. This is an innovative system that I devised that had the materials delivered. I had to pay the contractors. They did the gates for me too, so it was about $5,000. Just for 78 feet. Yeah. Wow. wow. I know. Fencing is... How much is your house worth? <laughs> much more. <laughs> your house is worth $500,000 to a million dollars. It's a very small portion. Well, but, so if you have a budget, this would be one year, and this is one year's budget. I have a bit of a, 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 an issue with a neighbor who uh, put up an illegal fence because he put it into our property, and he put a gate onto that property so he could walk in and out of our property whenever he wants. Mm -hmm. And so we went through that, that gate, and he started uh, knocking down a hillside and putting up a wall. On your property? On our property. Well, you have to contact the city. Just go to LA City and file a complaint. They, they told me this is now a civil matter. So what we need to do is we need to put up a fence and, and uh, uh, replace his fence or take down his fence. Take down his fence and put up your fence. Once you've done a survey. Yeah, we did that. Okay. That's how I know he's on my property. And so the thing is, is that can this work if we were to put that kind of timber cell along the